How does a person who started out as a laborer in Chicago end up designing landscapes for some of the most influential people of the 20th century? In today's video, I'll answer that question and I'll tell the remarkable story of Jen Jensen. While his name isn't as widely recognized as some of his contemporaries, like Frederick Law Olmsted or Frank Lloyd Wright, his legacy on the landscape was no less remarkable. Jensen's groundbreaking work laid the foundation for the creation of urban parks, green spaces, and garden cities. And one of Jensen's most enduring contributions was his advocacy for the prairie style of landscaping, which emphasized native plants and materials. He believed that by embracing the indigenous flora and fauna of a region, cities could become more sustainable and ecologically resilient. Jens Jensen was born in Denmark in 1860, and by the time he immigrated to the United States as a young man, the Industrial Revolution was in full swing. And while progress was creating incredible wealth for the industrial leaders, their workers lived a life of squalor. The rise of industry created urban slums where the poor working class had little access to nature. At the time Jen Jensen arrived in Chicago, the city was one of the fastest growing cities in America. Jensen was an eyewitness to the terrible destruction that industry was doing to our environment. And he was quoted as saying, For the first time in the course of human history, mankind actually possesses power and the might to alter and throw out of harmony the natural order of the earth. We cut down the forests, erode the hills and the gullies. We poison the lakes and the rivers with industrial chemicals, incidentally killing the fish and then drinking the water ourselves. We poison the very air we breathe. What is happening to our once beautiful landscape is a catastrophe of the first magnitude. The future will curse us. Jensen received his technical training in Copenhagen and spent three years sketching parks in Germany. When he applied for a job at the West Chicago Park System, he was told they needed a day laborer, not a landscapist. He needed money, so he took the job. Within a year, he was foreman at Union Park, and within a short period of time, he became the superintendent of the whole West Park System and the consultant landscape architect. His career in the park system wasn't without controversy. He got fired twice because he wouldn't participate in park politics. He considered parks essential to the health and welfare of people and was a tireless promoter to preserve green spaces and care for our natural environment. In 1915, Jensen was asked to consult on a problem for the Henry Ford Estate in Dearborn, Michigan that was under construction at the time. Apparently, Henry Ford was concerned that the grating surrounding the house gave the illusion that the house was sliding down the hill. Jensen was asked to consult on the issue and corrected the problem with minor grating changes. Ford approached Jensen afterwards to work on the grounds surrounding the house. Originally, Jensen refused the offer. He anticipated disagreements because he was an artist and Henry Ford was an industrialist. But Ford managed to convince Jensen to take on the commission and Jensen created a site plan for the estate. Jens Jensen's work for Ford would not be without its drama, but ironically, it wasn't Henry Ford that he had the issue with. It was his wife, Clara. But before we get into that soap opera, let's talk about some of the design features of the Henry Ford estate. Jensen's plan included a dam that was used to power a hydroelectric power plant on the Rouge River. He selected the site for the dam so carefully that it appeared as if it was a natural rapid in the river itself. He also created layered rocking along the edge of the river where it looked wild, but still allowed the river to be accessible. The work at the Henry Ford Estate is still considered one of the best examples of Jensen's work. Jensen also created large open areas, large meadows on the grounds at Fairlane. The largest meadow that I'm walking on here was called the Great Meadow. The meadow had a slight bend that led right to a small pond that Jensen had created. The meadow was actually aligned with the axis of the rising and the setting sun. And every summer solstice, the sun would set in the notch above the trees 
right above the lake. Jensen designed a boathouse that he intended to look like a cave opening in the hillside. This use of layered stone, again, is a common Jensen design element. The layered stone was inspired by the actual coastlines that he saw in the Midwest, as you can see in this photograph. Jensen designed a beautiful rock garden for the Fords that was engineered to work with nature and be relatively maintenance free. You can see the remnants of that rock garden here. The stone was arranged with strong horizontal lines. In the early 1920s, Mrs. Ford turned her focus to non-native garden designs and chose to rearrange the horizontally layered stones into an alpine rock garden with flowers that required the full-time attention of one of the estate's 26 gardeners. These are the ruins of that garden. And now we get to the soap opera part of the story. Jensen's original Ford plan called for a formal rose garden at the side of the house. It was a small rose garden, but Clara Ford decided that she wanted a much larger rose garden. And the spot she selected was smack dab in the middle of one of Jensen's meadows. When Jensen wouldn't make the requested changes, Clara Ford hired another landscape architect to complete the work. Jensen was outraged. Jensen was offended that another landscape architect would intrude on his relationship with his client. And as a result, he contacted the American Society of Landscape Architects to request that the designer be reprimanded. When the society refused, Jensen not only quit working for Henry Ford, but he also resigned from the American Society of Landscape Architects. Today, there's not much left of the two and a half acre rose garden, but at the time the garden was completed, it contained approximately 10,000 rose plants, 400 different varieties, and cost more than $200,000 to build. In an interview with Jensen in 1947, he was talking about growing up in Denmark. I was attracted by the immensity of the sea, and in its place came the great plains of America. It is the strength of America, the greatest strength we have, far more powerful than the mountains. I was fortunate to come early enough to see large stretches of plains west of Chicago, acres and acres of black-eyed Susans. You could almost see their reflection against the sky above. This outburst of color, that's the greatness of the plains of North America. Jensen's ideas about the importance of green spaces, of nature, of community gardens, was far ahead of its time. We now understand that access to nature isn't just a luxury, but it's a fundamental human need. And Jensen's work reminds us of that truth. I'm reminded of his words. But you know wherever you go, where there is a forest, there is peace, there is something else. And that is that we have this intense beauty, and beauty gives you peace wherever you meet it in the world. By the end of his career, Jensen was considered one of America's most visionary prairie school landscape architects. His use of horizontal lines, his naturalistic stonework, and his conservation and use of native plant materials are design elements that still inspire us today. He held a deep reverence for the beauty of the natural world, and he would go on to design an incredible range of projects, residential, parks and preserves, schools, hospitals, office centers, and large estates for the leading industrialists of the 20th century. Jens Jensen's mark on the landscape is incredible. So leave me some comments because I'd love to know how you enjoyed this story about Jens Jensen. And that's it for this video, friends. I'll see you in the next one. Ooh,